Hey, what's up folks? How's it going? This is Wadja. Hope you guys are all doing well. And if you're finally interested in getting a drone for the first time, you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money, well, you're in luck right now. For under $500, probably one of the best solutions out there is this. This is the Phantom 3 Standard. It's a quad HD flying camera platform that shares many of the capabilities and features of the big Phantom 3 Professional and even the larger Inspire 1 drone from DJI. So we're going to take a look at this specific drone, see if it's worth the money, take a look at the features and capabilities, and to really determine if it's right for you. So if you're interested, stay tuned and let's find out. Now the Phantom 3 Standard is the entry level model for the new Phantom 3 lineup of drones from a DJI, but physically the Standard is pretty much identical to the external look and design of all the other Phantom 3 drones right now. The things that you're missing from the Standard compared to let's say the top end professional model is you don't have the light bridge technology which will increase your range from one kilometer to two kilometers and also give you a better HD feed uh, to your smartphone. You don't have the advanced optical tracking capabilities which will improve your hover stability as well as the camera on this drone is a quad HD camera and it does not record 4k so if 4k is not that important to you and the other things that we mentioned isn't that big of a deal and if you want more explanation about each of the th different advantages that the uh, Phantom 3 Professional presents definitely check out the full review we'll have the link in the description down below now apart from those features the uh, Phantom 3 standard is a pretty darn capable little drone it can achieve a maximum speed of 16 meters per second as well as five meters per second in terms of its maximum ascent speed it also has built-in gps so the hovering capabilities are pretty darn stable and it has return to home functionality which is a great safety precaution if you want to bring back the drone to its original landing position furthermore in terms of the signal quality you have up to one kilometers of line of sight range and the maximum altitude is set to 120 meters now one of the nice things about the standard opposed to some of the light bridge drones is that the battery life is actually quite good i average about 20 three minutes of real world flight time and if you're more aggressive with it or gentle with it your battery life will definitely vary thankfully the charge time isn't too bad you can get a zero to hundred percent charge in under 40 minutes now the included radio is a really quite great it's quite simple in terms of its design it's in fact the same uh, controller that they've been using for a couple of generations on the phantom 2 lineup of drones and i have no complaints with it whatsoever very easy to control with the dual uh, thumbsticks you also have a gimbal control control dial on the left hand side. Now attached to the controller is the clamp for your smartphone and this is pretty universal. You can fit pretty much any size of smartphone that you have and there's probably an adapter for tablets as well. Additionally in terms of the device support the DJI Go app is cross compatible for both iOS and Android. I have it running on the Samsung S6 as you can see and the actual application is really easy to navigate. You can control a whole bunch of different settings of your drone through the app whether that be flight related or video quality related related so it's definitely a pretty powerful uh, piece of software even though this is an entry-level system now as we mentioned before this whole entire system depends upon uh, the Wi-Fi signal so the signal quality of your video will degrade if the drone gets further and further away again it's fairly good in terms of uh, just basically having an idea of what the drone is looking at and when you're closer up you do get a nice 720p at 30 frames per second feed but that quality does degrade pretty rapidly as uh, soon as as you start increasing the range between you and your drone. That of course is one of the major differences between a Wi-Fi enabled drone and one that's enabled with a light bridge technology which is not only going to increase and double your range but also greatly improve the uh, signal quality and consistency of your HD live feed from the camera. And speaking of the camera itself it's housed in the three axis gimbal that's included with the drone and it provides excellent stability up there with all the other uh, gimbals that you find from DJI. And in terms of the technical parameters of the camera it's using a half point three inch sensor it has a built-in 20 millimeter lens with a maximum aperture of f 2.8 giving you a field of view about 94 degrees and the view that comes out of the camera is a little bit more standard looking than uh, let's say a gopro which has a very wide field of view but the advantage over here is you don't have any fisheye effect or lens distortion and i think it gives you a little bit more representative view of the aerial landscape one that looks a little bit more cinematic than what you would find with a drone that 
that has a GoPro on it. Now, in terms of the actual video quality itself, I've actually uploaded this video in Quad HD, so you can actually view it in its full glory. And the exact resolution is 2704 by 1520, so it's actually a little bit higher than the uh, standard Quad HD resolution, and you record that resolution up to 30 frames per second, as well as 24 and 25 frames per second. You also have a full HD capabilities at 30 frames per second as well, and if you record at 720p, you can do 60 FPS. At 2.5K, I think this drone looks absolutely fantastic, and in fact, in a lot of ways, it looks very similar to a 4K image, and most people that don't have a 4K monitor are not going to even notice the difference. So in terms of the value of the actual video quality itself and the actual gimbal stabilization, is pretty darn remarkable, and it's really hard to complain about any uh, problems that you may have with the video, especially at this price range. And by the way, uh, the uh, bit rate is around 40 megabits per second, which is definitely not as high as what you would expect at Quad HD resolution. When it comes to the actual video quality, to my eyes, it looks pretty darn sensational even at that lower bit rate. But really on that guys, that's really it. As you can see in terms of value, the Phantom 3 standard is absolutely fantastic, especially as an all-in-one solution. You can always upgrade uh, to certain uh, specific parts if you want the light bridge technology and you can kind of pay extra for that. But as is for under the $500 mark, it's an insane value. Definitely check out the B&H uh, photo link that we have in the description down below. They were kind enough to actually send one out for a review. Without them, this video wouldn't be possible. So if you want to help support us and you're actually interested in buying one that's probably one of the best places to go they have excellent service and support so definitely check out that link if you want more detail about the product as well but besides those things that's really it if you're interested in more drone related videos we're going to have a couple of different products coming out uh, in the channel we're hopefully looking forward to the bebop 2 that they're sending out to us and it's going to be a really interesting comparison between uh, the phantom 3 standard that we have over here versus the bebop 2 because they're kind of very similar products at similar price ranges. So if you're interested in that kind of comparison, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. But thanks again for watching. Thanks again for your support and we'll see you later. Take care.